It's 7 o'clock and we'll begin the council meeting of August 14th. Do you have roll call, please? Miller? Yes. Williams? Shiver? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Bush? Yes. Okay, the first item is the approval of the regular session meetings of August of July 24th. I move approval of those minutes. Second. Miller? Yes. Shepard? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Black? Yes. The next item is the approval of the August 7th work session. Move approval of those minutes. Or the, yes, the minutes from the work session. Mm -hmm. Oh, second. Miller? Yes. Shepard? Yes. Nichols? You were there. You were there. You were there. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> That's why I didn't say that. I was like, were there that? Yes. The next item, we're going to open a public hearing for the annexation of Smiley Drive. And Mr. Slagle? Do you have a motion to open that? Mm. Need a motion, yes. I need a motion to open that. So the second. Miller? Yes. Shiver? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Flash? Yes. Yeah, Mr. Slate. Okay. Um, Smiley uh, Drive uh, is uh, City Street. It was never annexed into the city limits. And so uh, this will start that process. So, uh, Rita, would you uh, cover the details and the portion of the street that uh, we are looking at? The City of Mexico has petitioned to annex Smiley Drive into the city limits. Currently, only the east 300 feet is within the city limits. This street runs from Amwood Drive along the north side of Boston proper, Goldcrest Distributing, and Brookstone to Sarah Copper. Smiley Drive constructed, was constructed in 2004 with a Community Development Block Grant. The property for the street was donated by Raymond and Glenny Smiley. The purpose of this public hearing is to obtain input from any interested person, corporation, or political subdivision <coughs> regarding the proposed annexation. After a 14-day waiting period, if no objection is filed, City Council will be preceded, presented with an ordinance for annexation. Staff recommends that Council proceed with the advertised public hearing. Questions? Do, do we know um, why that whole area was not annexed at the time? that the road was built or was it an oversight or what happened? I don't think it was an oversight. I think when that road was actually put in, only though that 300 feet was put in, then it was put in afterwards and then we just did not annex it into the city. So it, I guess it was an oversight, but it was just not put in at the proper time. So I have a question. So technically, that road is supposed to be taken care of by the road district right now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they take care of paved streets. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's taken you're care funny. of by the city. I think you're funny today. <laughs> Well, that's a true question, right? I mean, technically, they are supposed to take care of that road right now, correct? It is because it's not meeting. annexed in, yes. Yeah. Other comments or questions? We open this up to the public now. Mm -hmm. If there's anybody here that would like to speak about this public hearing, we ask you to come to the podium, state your name, and try to hold it to three minutes. If there's no comments, uh, do we need a motion to close it? We need a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Yes. Williams? Yes. Shiver? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Flash? Yes. <coughs> okay. Item 5A is a bill authorizing the city to contract with Duke's Root Con Control. Okay. Did 
but you want me to read the whole thing for you? For chemical root control in the city sanitary sewer collection system, reading and passage. Okay. Mr. Slack. This is a part of our uh, annual maintenance on uh, the sewer collection system to cover the details of this resolution. What we're asking for, we'll turn to Kenzie Russell. We have used Duke's root control for uh, the last couple of years. Uh, that it is a proprietary uh, system uh, that uh, uses a foaming chemical so it reaches all around the pipe, catches the roots that are hanging down as well as those that might be coming uh, up from the bottom. Uh, perhaps most importantly to us, uh, it does not uh, have a copper compound in it and so we're able to get root control and not add anything uh, by way of copper to our uh, system. Uh, Byboard is a cooperative purchasing uh, group. Uh, they bid root control. Uh, we are a member of that uh, co-op and Dukes has uh, provided uh, through by board a contract that is about 13 percent less than their normal uh, catalog prices and so we believe it's a, a good price as well as uh, being uh, one of the few systems on the market that does not contain copper and for those reasons we're recommending uh, the contract uh, with Duke's uh, root control for chemical control. Do you know approximately how long this lasts once it's uh, put in the root system? Is it a five-year? It, it has a three-year three warranty on it, and they do come back after approximately 18 months and re-inspect. If roots have started to grow back, they will retreat at no charge. How much does this cover? Uh, this will cover about four and a half miles of sewer line. This contract. What's uh, the bigger? You're going to get started with the big pipes and work your way down? Or how uh, we, we have um, both some 18 inch pipes, uh, some of the uh, Lafayette trunk sewer that we TV'd uh, that we found uh, roots in. Uh, is included down to uh, some of our eight inch lines in residential areas that have larger mature trees. Uh, one of those areas is uh, uh, in the Dorcas Lane uh, Plunkett uh, uh, Lake area. That same area will uh, is scheduled for some slip lining as well, but uh, we need to eliminate the roots before we slip line. So. But it doesn't actually eliminate; it just kills the roots. It kills them back. Uh, it uh, uh, actually will kill them back to a point uh, four to six inches outside the pipe diameter. Then does the debris fall off, or does it stay there until it it dries up, <coughs> falls off? It. Uh, What's the term for drying? Dis dissection? Dissecates. Dissecates. Thank you, Chad. Uh, the root, and, and then that falls off and flushes through the system. Pleasure. Move for reading of bill number 2017 47. <coughs> Second. Miller? Yes. Williams? Yes. 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 Bill number 2017-47, a resolution authorizing the contract with Duke's Root Control for chemical root control in the city sanitary sewer collection system, whereas the city has a need to control root growth in the sanitary sewer system, and whereas Duke's Root Control has a proprietary chemical root control methodology, and whereas Duke Root Control is bid through the Buy Board Cooperative Purchasing Group. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the
the Council of the City of Mexico, Missouri as follows. Section 1. The City of Mexico, by accepting this agreement, is authorizing the City Manager to sign a contract with Duke's Root Control for chemical root control in the City's sanitary sewer, system, sewer collection system. Section 2. This passage shall be in full force and effect from and after the time of its passage. Move for passage of Bill Number 2017-41. Second. Yes, but it's 47. 47. Not 41. Oh, excuse me. 47. 47. Yes. 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 <coughs> Next item is Bill 2017-48, a resolution authorizing the city manager to sign a contract document with Altamont Steel Buildings for the construction and design of the Fairground Park Shelter. Mr. Slegel. Yes, this is the next phase of this project. You remember we did the uh, storm water uh, in the area. Now we're moving on to construction and cover the details of the bids. We'll turn to Chad Schumacher. Thank you, Bruce. Good evening. Uh, advertisement for bid was placed in the ledger and uh, design of the building for uh, Fairgrounds Park Shelter was uh, mailed to 16 contractors. It was placed on the city's website. We opened bids on August 8th and we received five bids. Uh, Ultimate Steel Building in Mexico, Missouri submitted what we considered the best and low bid in the amount of $56,731.64. Um, you'll notice we left the concrete supply in as an option because not all the bidders were able to supply both pieces, but uh, this particular piece did supply both pieces at a very good price. Our budget allows $107,000 for a fairground shelter replacement this year. Uh, as Bruce note, mentioned, we've already spent some money on stormwater. Um, we'll have probably some pad development costs prior to the building going in, and then um, uh, we're going to have some parking lot costs to come to come at the end of this yet. So uh, staff recommends that council proceed with reading passage of the attached resolution authorizing city manager to sign contract documents with ultimate steel building for the fairgrounds park shelter replacement. Oh, <coughs> sorry. Thanks, Bruce. Do we have any experience with the ultimate uh, steel building? No, Ron, we don't. Um, but uh, they have built quite a few buildings in the immediate area. They are a, a local vendor, and um, um, these buildings are actually constructed here, um, just outside of town. So um, we were happy to see two local bidders on something like this. Great. Thank you. Site map is on the smart board of you. This is site map you've seen prior, previously. It's just west of the swimming pool. Yes, sir. Pleasure of the board. I move for reading bill number 2017-48. Second. Yes. Yes. Shivers? Yes. 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 Bill number 2017-48, a resolution authorizing the city manager to sign contract documents with the Ultimate Steel Building of Mexico, Missouri for the Fairgrounds Park Shelter Replacement Project, whereas bids made pursuant to the invitation to bid for the design build of Fairgrounds Shelter Replacement Project were open on August 8, 2017, and whereas it was determined that the bid of Ultimate Steel Building of Mexico, Missouri was an acceptable bid. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Mexico, Mexico, Missouri as follows. Section 1, the City of Mexico, Missouri accepts the bid from Ultimate Steel Building of Mexico, Missouri in the amount of $56,731.64. Section 2, the contract approved is subject to RS Missouri .295.675 requiring the contractor to utilize employees on site with the 10-hour OSHA construction safety training. Section 3, the city manager is hereby authorized to execute on behalf of the City of Mexico contract documents with Ultimate Steel Building. In section 4, this resolution shall be in full force in effect from and after the time of its passage. I move for passage, Bill number 2017-48. Yes. 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 Next is an ordinance, Bill number 2017-49, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute contract documents with engineering design services for Holt Street TIDP 4400-310 project. Reading by title only, two readings by title only, and passage. Mr. Slago. Yes, Your Honor. This is the next step in the uh, phase of reconstructing Holt Street, hiring the engineer. This is uh, a part of the project that is being and funded by a uh, uh, federal highways grant to cover the details we will turn to uh, Kenzie Russell 
this is pretty straightforward. Uh, we are moving uh, ahead uh, with the various steps that we need to do because of deadlines for funding obligation <coughs> under the grant. Uh, and so we looked at three firms that are listed on MoDOT's on-call list. Uh, we chose Bartlett and West for several reasons. One, because we're familiar with them, we've worked with them, and they are our on-call engineers here. Uh, but also because they are familiar with the compacted concrete uh, innovative construction method that uh, is proposed to use uh, for the project. Uh, they submitted an engineering contract in MoDOT's uh, required form. It includes the design engineering, uh, utility coordination, easement preparations, uh, surveying, uh, those uh, kinds of things. The uh, cost is a not to exceed uh, cost of $99,882.94. This is within the grant uh, budget amount that was allowed for this work. And so we are asking the council to uh, do two readings and passage of an ordinance. Uh, in addition, uh, Mr. Todd Kemper and Mr. Steve Schultz from Bartland West are here tonight in the event that you might have uh, questions of them uh, with Bartland West. Uh, and uh, so, uh, because this is an important contract to us and to them, <coughs> they're, they're present tonight. I would uh, uh, like to ask about the road itself in terms of when this project is, is completed. How long do you think it would, uh, this road will stand up under the uh, heavy truck traffic that it has? Uh, uh, Todd, do you, do you want to give a, a design uh, uh, <laughs> life uh, there? Uh, with the with the truck traffic, uh, a, a normal uh, design would be for a, a 25 year life. Uh, we hope with uh, base and with care that we can extend that. As many of our concrete streets here in Mexico are much older than that anyway, uh, but it will be designed for the truck tra traffic. It'll be a heavy duty pavement. I know when uh, years ago I heard someone talk about Interstate 70 and how it was built with you know eight or ten inches of concrete and now it needs to have like 14 to 16 inches or something like that to support the heavy truck track that we have. So are we talking about that kind of depth of the concrete? Currently, that is not the plan. Currently, I-70, one thing that's going on there is it's much heavier. It's a lot more traffic, and it's also much faster traffic, so you have more impact loads. Working with our contractor that does this type of pavement, we're currently targeting about an 8-inch, but we're also just starting design, so that very well could change. Uh, you know, it's, Thicker is better, but then it comes with a cost, so trying to figure out what you can do with inside the budget. Okay. So Certainly. The, the total number of trucks is part of the equation as well as the speed, uh, how hard they're hitting the pavement, uh, so to speak. That's part of it. And with I-70, uh, the volume of traffic has far exceeded what the uh, life expected average daily traffic was and so that's part of the reason on the interstates you see uh, these changes these needs occur i think it's the street right now i can't see six inches six inches mm -hmm. i've heard that, that and it's just straight on clay there's no sub base under it how are, how are they hitting the street as, as, a, as a tire runs across a joint, there's a, 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 a little bit of a bump. There's always a little bit of a bump. On a gravel road, it's particularly noticeable because once you get one bump on a tire, it tends to bounce and you get that corrugated 
rattle on a gravel road. Uh, concrete street, of course, doesn't do that, but you do have that repeated impact as it goes across joints uh, and, and over time as the pavement um, changes alignment a little bit, uh, expansion from sun, hot summer, whatever it might be. Uh, those bumps uh, are there, and so those tires will will impact. Uh, not like a plane touching down on a runway. But That's what I was trying to figure out there. If we're going to have a ramp, or what we're going to have there. Yeah, we're we're anticipating flying trucks. <laughs> Do I understand that the curb and gutter would be poured, and the street would be? This compacted concrete in between curb and gutter, is that kind of what I'm hearing and thinking? Don't know what I'm talking about or something? Yes, the, the expectation, I think, to answer your question at this point is that the curb and gutter would be separate. It would be your typical concrete because it would be formed with some type of slip form shoe. Uh -huh. And then the, the pavement for the road would be the compacted concrete pavement. Basically, what they're going to be doing the thing that makes this special is using essentially an asphalt paper. It's a very special asphalt paper to lay concrete pavement. Um, so basically, if you think of an asphalt roadway, you're always laying that between curbs. It doesn't have a shoe on the outside to form the curb. So where some concrete pavers you can curb, form the curb in. So that is the expectation. Is you'd have a curb on each side, and then you'd have a joint, and then the compacted concrete pavement would be between. Is this concrete wet? When it goes down, or it's dry? very dry. It, I mean, yes, it's wet, but it is uh, extremely dry concrete. It's about basically as dry as they can get it and still you know, paint it. We do have, uh, a, or will be setting up a tab on the city website that will be a project tab. And so as the project proceeds, uh, information about the project as well as pictures and all will be posted there uh, just for uh, anyone's information to track it, see what's going on. Uh, I anticipate because this is a demonstration project that we'll have a, a uh, day uh, when folks would be invited to come see the process uh, and that would include uh, other local area engineers, MoDOT folks, etc. So how long will it actually take to do this? A couple of days? One day? That's a good question that I don't know that I can answer accurately at this point. Part of that's going to depend on uh, the phasing of construction. Uh, we have had some preliminary talks with ADM. Uh, we know that uh, May and June are their slow months, and so that would be the best time to try to fit it in. Uh, a 60 day time frame there uh, would appear to be a doable uh, thing for at least getting traffic back a substantial completion might still be working on some sidewalks uh, in that time frame. Yeah, because I heard the last time years ago, I wasn't around when it happened. I heard when they laid the initial concrete that they had to sort of rush. And so sometimes they said that six inch pavement or six inch concrete isn't quite six inches. So there's some areas that's probably about two. Some of the areas that we have patched have not been a full six inches, <clears throat> that's correct. Yeah, so wanting to make sure that this time it would be able to get the full eight inches yeah. down. And using the asphalt paper is why you run drier concrete. It's a modified asphalt paver. It's not just a standard asphalt paver. It has been been mechanically modified, and the the mix is a special design mix. Uh, it would look like, it, at least in what I have seen from pictures and a little video online, uh, it looks kind of like damp sacrete. That poor lot of concrete and dry concrete is not something you want. That's what I was. Because of the compaction, uh, it, it utilizes the moisture uh, better uh, for hydration. And uh, water cement ratio is important for ultimate concrete strength. So uh, the more optimum that you can get that ratio, which in most cases is the least amount of water, uh, the stronger your concrete's going to be and more durable. 
So my question is basically we're doing this, we're spending a lot more money than what a normal street would cost, but we're not, not sure if we're going to get anything Actually, more for out of reconstruction, it. Chris, this uh, is anticipated to be less money than a conventional reconstruction. Less. The, the uh, costs that we had from project in, I believe it was Wichita, and at uh, the Caterpillar plant, was that in Atlanta? Uh, it actually was low bid compared to asphalt and conventional concrete both. Yeah, the price that our contracting partners that do this have, have given us we, is basically a very comparable price to asphalt. And even, I mean, concrete should definitely last much longer than an asphalt street. So cost-wise, it, it was pretty <coughs> equal, and then this was the only way to get an 80% grant. So we felt like, yes, it's an innovation project, so it, it does have concrete types that haven't been used a ton, but where they've been used, it seems pretty successful, and you can get 80% paid from what seems to be about the exact same project cost. Does it have rebar stands in it, and rebar like a highway? No, typically concrete pavement now does not have reinforcement in it. It has reinforcement at the joints, and using this paving machine, there, there are much less joints, so it will not be a reinforced concrete pavement. That's one of the areas of cost saving is fewer joints, uh, fewer steels necessary. When you see a highway getting paved, they have these little bridges every so often. At, and then they got all the at each joint. Uh, they have it's a load transfer. Uh, those mm -hmm. green epoxy coated dowels are intended to transfer the load from one slab to the other slab where that joint is. Players of the board, council. I move for reading you know, bill number two thousand seventeen dash forty nine. Second. Yes. Williams. Yes. 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 Yes.
really don't have anything to say. I've said it all. <laughs> I know how that seat feels. <laughs> I think sometime I'm going to start down here and go this way. Yeah, <laughs> mix, mix it up. Mr. Spikeler. Nothing at this time, Your Honor. One thing I want to say is he already said Netflix ribbon cuttings Thursday and uh, if you haven't seen the little building uh, if when you see it you're gonna say hmm that looks a lot like the old fairgrounds building that we had that got burned down I think it's supposed to look like that to an extent so it's, it's, it's pretty neat uh, at this time we're open to the public if you'd like to uh, make a statement please stand at the podium state your name and address for the record and try to keep your comments to three minutes Joanne Thomas, 216 East Vine Street. I just wanted to come and say thank you. Uh, you all may not be aware, but Rita Jackson and Public Safety, Animal Control, City Inspector, and I'm not sure who else, uh, assisted with a house at 605 East Park, which is was in poor condition, trash everywhere, insects crawling, critters in the house, and uh, after much concern and phone conversation, conversations something was done about the house so I just wanted to come and say uh, thank you because we own uh, property at 603 and we're trying to sell that we had a few people come by interested but when they looked at 605 no we're not interested so I wanted to say uh, thank you many times we come and complain but we don't always come and say thank you so I wanted to thank you and your staff uh, for the assistance that we received with the house at 605 Park thank you anyone else if not I move we adjourn into executive session pursuant to revised statute of Missouri 610021 litigation and personnel matters second, second. <laughs> Miller? Yes. Williams? Yes. Shiver? Yes. 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 Yes.